If we took the uh, pioneers, those uh, guys who uh, originally thought of uh, developing the oil sands, they would be staggered by the success. And I think their overriding feeling would be one of great pride. Pride that we've supported the communities, pride that we're willing to uh, stand up and be leaders uh, on the environmental front. Fort McMurray was a quiet settlement and gateway to the north in the early 1950s when a much anticipated Government of Alberta report confirmed the surrounding oil sands deposits could be developed at a marginal profit. And so in 1953, Sun Oil acquired an oil sands lease and established Great Canadian Oil Sands Company, GCOS. Construction of a test plant began in 1963. By 1964, construction was underway to build a plant that would produce 31,500 barrels of oil per day. With a whopping price tag of $240 million, it was at the time the largest single private investment in the country and also the biggest gamble in Canadian history. At the outset of this undertaking, I told our stockholders that unless projects of this character were periodically challenged and solved, our organization would become soft and eventually useless. When I started, uh, there was nothing running in the plant. We had to commission the first river water lines, the instrument air system, all the utilities. Everybody trained how to start that plant out and how to operate it for six months before we actually touched anything. In those early days, the industry was, um, was a leap of faith. This is a historic day for the province of Alberta. It is fitting that we gathered here today should dedicate this plant not merely to the production of oil, but to the continual progress and enrichment of mankind. I now declare this great Canadian oil sands complex to be officially open. The plant experienced upsets which resulted in cascade failures uh, to the point where basically there was nothing working, not even a flame in a boiler. The uh, operation was kind of problematic if you want to put that politely. <laughs> we, had, we, had, we had lots of challenges. We quit counting after about 80 power failures and we froze that whole plant up badly once and it took us six months to get it back up on its feet. And winning oil from oil sands is hard work. There's no no substitute. It wasn't what I would call an ordeal, but it was just a new experience that nobody had a map for. Talking to uh, the retiring retirees, the, the, the pioneers of our business, the thing that catches me is their never say never attitude. There was lots of opportunity for them to throw their hands in the air and, and give up and say, you know, this is for somebody else, but, uh, but they stuck with it. As production increased through the 1970s, so did the financial losses. In 1979, the company reorganized and Suncor Inc. was established and continued to operate the plant. Back in the early 80s, our business was struggling economically. Um, you know, there was talk about uh, it becoming an unviable business. How are we going to get through this? How are we going to get through the challenges of being a sustainable company? I, I do think to some degree it's a bit of a metaphor of our journey, that it always hasn't been great. Like it, it wasn't like Howard Pugh, 1967, we start up the facilities and it's just been a gold mine ever since and it's been a straight line and everything's been easy. It hasn't been. The company literally entering the 90s was struggling financially and the shareholders decided to cast it to the sea. In fact, in 1991, the Globe and Mail dubbed Suncor the unluckiest oil company in Canada. 
Something had to be done, and fast. So six areas of improvement were recognized and prioritized with every decision made. So was this going to make me more efficient? Was going to be better quality for the customer? Was it environmentally sound? Did it, uh, did it fit with the community needs? Did it make the employees uh, feel like they were their needs about safety and safe awareness and managing the risks in the business, feel more confident about our ability to deliver and so on, that we would actually move all fronts forward. And that's exactly what we did. But it was a we thing. And that was what was so exciting. And we had so many things to fix. We could only get better. <laughs> it was a transformative change. Costs were cut by four to five dollars per barrel. Revenue increased while improving operations on all fronts. So it's incredible how an idea and a passionate person that decided to make a difference created this whole industry that we all uh, commit our time and energies to. We reorganized again to form Suncor Energy in 1997, the same year the Steep Bank Bridge was opened to the east side of the river. When I think back to that day today, the bridge was kind of symbolic of our bridge to the future. Uh, uh, kind of offended by being a footnote in uh, you know the global views of, of energy and, and oil specifically and then we emerged uh, into prominence and uh, I think as Steve Williams says sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for. This transformation brought us to the world stage and the scrutiny of the world to Suncor. Climate change is a reality. We have real challenges around developing the oil sands and oil industry. It's so easy just to stand in one place and be critical of something else. I think we have to have an honest debate. We have to recognize the benefits and the costs um, and we'll best do that by working together. We do have to recognize that there are alternative viewpoints and diversity of thought that exists externally that make us better. It's a changing world right now. There's a lot of challenges out there. We're in the energy business and uh, there's a lot of negative connotations to that out there in the world. You know, and so I think our challenge going forward is to advance new technologies, continue to innovate and, and progress. We're gonna have to manufacture goods, extract energy in a way that's sustainable. We're gonna have environmental limits, um, economic limits that will be um, within the way we do things. So, you know, it may be a way that I'm working myself out of a job, but I actually think it will be the jobs of everyone in the future. Technology and innovation has been our hallmark for success, allowing us to pursue sustainability while lessening our environmental footprint. This track record as a pioneering innovator and leader is both cause for celebration and inspiration in the future. And really the enabler uh, on so much of that is our people. Uh, our, our determination, our willingness to push through in the, the face of challenges that are in front of us, uh, those two things are going to set the course for the next 50 years for us. We were opening up the first reclaimed tailing pond and I, I couldn't have been more proud than to stand with people from Fort Mackay who say, I used to play here when I was a kid and that's where we picked berries and to be on a piece of land wherein you could actually see nature coming back and the knowledge that you know, down the road they may well be doing some of those activities again in the future. By investing in R&D innovation technology, it's going, to, it's going to help us quite a bit. We have, we have good people, so we should be able to be, uh, to be quite competitive in this environment. But at some point, the world will change, but I'm sure we'll be able to adapt like we did in the past. 
we are in an era now where not only our economic, environmental, but our social import performance is actually vital for our business. It's a long-term play that we're in and we can't be in it on our own. It's really easy to, relatively easy, to, to um, you know, cut a check to support a bricks and mortar project, but what it takes to be in that solution space and working alongside community groups um, is a, is a long-term commitment. And in this Canada's 150th year, we also recognize the shared history we have with our Aboriginal neighbors and the need for greater understanding and reconciliation. We know that they are interested in playing a greater role in how energy is developed in Canada. And so we are committing through our social goal and our activities in communities to better understand what that looks like and think about ways we can partner in a different way moving forward. It's a difficult journey, I would say even more so. It's kind of like walking a, a balance between two worlds and if communities get connected to the social goal. They understand what we're doing. Potentially that could be our, our way of saying to them that we are trying to do things better and differently. Suncor's greatest asset is its people. Um, that's the thing which has carried us through the difficult times um, in terms of economy, the difficult times in terms of technology, the difficult times in terms of uh, the attention we've attracted, and that's what's carried us through the most important piece, which is building trust uh, with the communities uh, we work with. Suncor is it's the lifeblood, I think, of a lot of the economic activity in the region, and even when our economics are challenged, Suncor remains at the table willing to proceed. All of Canada is benefiting from what goes on here in Fort McMurray with Suncor and its oil sands operations. Uh, in terms of having employees come move to Fort McMurray uh, to work here, buying tools and parts and machinery and equipment from Quebec, Ontario, BC, Newfoundland. Uh, it is a Canadian company and it stretches from Victoria to St. John's uh, and then is now even global. So it, it starts here in Fort McMurray but has its arms everywhere. Oil Sam's has become a big part of the Canadian story and I think people realized during the fires how important it was. You shut off some of this resource, not all of it, but some of this resource for a six week period and the entire economic indicators of the country dropped and, and I think it just emphasizes how important these humble beginnings came with Carl Clark to where we are today and how important that is across our country. We're willing to do the right thing. We will uh, take on those challenges, we will step out, we will be a leader and it's just incredible to be part of something bigger than yourself. What's helped us move forward so successfully has been our willingness uh, to innovate and learn new practices as we go forward. That's even more important for the next 50 years, so innovation is critical to our success. As long as there continues to be a demand for, for the things that we're producing, uh, our obligation is to do that as safely as possible and as environmentally sensitive as possible. We are lucky to be here in such an exciting time. I mean, last year we had the acquisition of a bigger stake in Synchro. Now we have the Fort Hill startup this year, the replication strategy with the Institute World and the expansion. That's uh, pretty much on the horizon now. There's so many things happening. It's very exciting to be a Suncor employee right now. Looking at the last uh, 50 years, looking at the next 50 years, I'd just like to say a sincere thank you to all of our stakeholders. And of course that includes our employees, um, the communities uh, we operate in, and our uh, shareholders.